Okay, recording back, and I hope I'm also sharing the now Emacs screen. And I do hope that the lag is not several uh, words, but um, let's get into the live coding file and fill in a little bit of related material. So we talked about derivatives. So I will not code out partial derivatives and so on here, but I will actually talk a little bit about type classes. So this is basically continuing on from the previous lecture about derivatives of fun, fun exp, but I will go through a little bit of type classes first. So this first example here is a phony um, example. It's a type class C, which I just made up. It has one method called foo, which is a function from A to A. So what is a type class? Well, you can see it as some kind of a collection of types with some common properties. And if I comment out the rest of the code here, then at this point, this uh, collection of type, now the, now the collection is empty. There are no types which are in class C. So that's a bit boring. So let's, let's move one step forward. And let's say that we make an instance C int, and we say, what is actually uh, foo for integers. So, so basically first the collection is empty. Uh, each instance declaration adds a new type to the collection. So now after this, now at least we have sort of lm int C or something like that. I mean, this is sort of informal notation. So that I mean that there is a set of instances of C and int, the type int is one of those elements. So notice it's a set of types. It's a collection of types here. And the proof or the sort of evidence that um, int is in the class is that I have given a definition of foo. Here I said foo of i is minus i. I can do that for, for integers. And if I move one step further, uh, now we have actually C sort of equal to the set int and bool, because both bool and int are allowed to be used with the operation foo. So we can try here to um, evaluate some expression so if I do, oh, what happened? I can't seem to shift my screen properly, but anyway, let's, let's have it like this. So I can apply foo to false, but I cannot apply foo, foo to high. And then it says, there is no instance for a list of characters. So, well, let's fix that. Let's make an instance of a list of characters and uh, if we do that and reload it, then I can apply foo to hey. So now three types are in C. So now there are three types and they do different things. And it's also, uh, you can notice here that they can do whatever they want. So there's, there's no, uh, Haskell does not restrict other than checking the type, what you do. So. It's, up, it's sort of your uh, freedom and responsibility to define reasonable things here. And here we have a few examples. Let's, let's check what they are. So test C1, test C2, and test C3. Uh, well, my name backwards is Kirtap. Uh, are then using, as you can see, the same function foo, but on different types, on integers, on Booleans, and on strings. And this is a, it's a very useful uh, tool because you can then implement, for example, mathematical operations. So we have still six minutes, so we can go a little bit towards defining some mathematical operations. So I've actually, oh, I'll do, I'll start with defining a class additive. So. Let's say that we want to collect types 
A, which are additive in some sense. And we'd say that means that there is a function add, which takes an A to an A to an A, and there is a zero of type A. So now I've required two things here. There should be two methods, add and zero of these types. And uh, it's natural to say that uh, say double is additive where add equals any suggestion. Plus, yes, addition could be addition and zero could be zero. So let's see now, okay, now I pressed caps lock accidentally. So this type checks and we can see what happens if you want to add the doubles 3.55 and 4.5 say, and that's a zero, uh, that's for eight. And we can also add zero and zero and so on. Okay, so now we have something that we can do addition with. And there was a question earlier about the data type that we were working on for the derivatives. So the fun X data type. So let's, let's scroll a bit. So I want to write an instance declaration here saying that fun exp is additive. And then it's question add fun exp and zero equals zero fun exp. What should be those definitions? So add fun exp, it should have this shape. It should take an A to an A to an A. And zero FE should just be an A. But what is A? Well, A should be fun exp. So any suggestions for definitions which could make this not only type check, but also seem reasonable. Yeah, so add FE of two arguments should be add of two arguments. So actually add FE should be add. And zero. Yeah, it's not const zero, but it is Z, C zero. So remember, these are actually syntax trees fun exp or syntax trees here. So let's see now what happens if I say add zero, zero, and I ask it to be of type fun exp. Okay, I have not remembered to add a deriving instance here. So let's say deriving show. So <laughs> add zero, zero is now a syntax tree with add and then C zero, C zero. Okay, and clearly you can do more interesting things than that, but it's, um, yeah, the, the, the language is a little bit limited right now. We only have additive. But notice that we can sort of ourselves here extend it in a reasonable way. Of course, we could have written here mol, and we could have written C7, but everybody would have been very confused if we would deliver that code somewhere, then it would be multiplication of seven and seven. So I wouldn't recommend it, but notice that there is no checking in Haskell, Haskell will not know what is reasonable or not here. It's just up to you to define it in a reasonable way. And uh, I think I will do the, the function instance example uh, and upload it separately because I don't want to rush it. But you can see here, at least what we've done so far is that we've added two types to the class additive and those are double and uh, double and fun exp so we have a set of types a collection of types for which we can do add and zero and those include double and fun exp then it's possible to add more but we don't really have time for that at this very moment so notice that um it's up to us to decide what the instances are, but we probably want to have some properties. So for example, for all X and Y, we would like add 
x zero to be equal to x and also equal to add zero x. Now you might also wonder for what definition of equality, but we will get to that later. But anyway, usually there are axioms associated with type classes, and this is a natural axiom to have for the additive class. And unfortunately, we cannot make Haskell automatically check these axioms. We could if we had a more expressive data system, but we can at least make uh, some tests and try to test it ourselves. Okay, that was all for now. And um, let's see you tomorrow at the exercise. Bye.